So, so I want to zero in on on this new psychology of awe. So, what what are people finding out about what this actually is? What what happens when people have these experiences of awe? Well, I, I mean, I think we really first we dove into what kind of outcomes do you get when you feel awe? What do you find? Then we actually took, I think, a few steps back and tried to figure out, actually, what is this emotion? We don't even know. We we have trouble classifying it as positive or negative, right? It defies some of these emotion theories that we have. Um, so, so the science sort of moved backward, forward, and then backward a little, and now it's moving forward again. Um, but we know, you know, maybe I'll cover some of the more social outcomes. You can cover more of the cognitive outcomes based on our backgrounds. But um, we know that it promotes um, humility, uh, which I think is a valued uh, trait in many cultures. Um, it promotes prosociality as part of, the, I think, that self-transcendent element where you're focusing more outward on others and what other people need. A sense of interconnection, um, common humanity, interest in things that affect all humans because you feel more connected to other people out there in the world. Um, we still know very little about experiences of awe towards people, which I think is a shame, and we're learning more about that. But there's been arguments put forward that it promotes this sort of strong group orientation and identification with a group. And I think that could be a really fruitful direction for research, um, both in a potentially good direction, but also maybe a dangerous mm-hmm. direction, right? If you think about the antecedents of cults yeah. um, and some of that Charismatic leaders. Charismatic yeah. leaders. So, so it does seem to be associated with these um, self-transcendent pro-social outcomes, which is why I typically put it in that category of emotions. But, but that being said, it has really fascinating cognitive outcomes as well, and it's unclear to what extent these are all intertwined, and some are just in a social realm, some are in a cognitive realm, or to what extent these are simultaneously interesting outcomes happening at the same time. So maybe you can, can cover some of those cognitive. Sure. Um, so... The, the research that I've done related to awe looks at its relationship to feelings of uncertainty, inability to explain what, what you're um, experiencing, and the, the motivations to explain and to find meaning that that experience can evoke. So, for example, we find that um, when you <clears throat> um, have people watch video clips that elicits awe, um, they report lower tolerance for uncertainty and this in turn motivates them to report greater belief in uh, supernatural agencies. So belief in God, belief in supernatural forces like karma. Um, and we also find that uh, this effect depends a bit on the theism of our participants. So for example, um, if, you are, if you are a theist, then awe um, has a direct effect on your strength of belief in the power of supernatural entities. If you're a non-theist, the relationship's a little bit less clear. We have some evidence that suggests for non-theists, it increases your affinity for scientific explanations for the world, um, but with with mixed results. So we get sort of a clear effect uh, for our theists, but our (laughs) non-theists, we don't don't quite know what's going on with them yet. How how do you study this? (laughs) I mean... You both have labs, I presume. Uh, do, do, what do you get your college students to come in and participate? Yeah, we um, <laughs> we have them watch videos of Planet Earth, which you know works pretty well for everyone. Um, we're trying to pilot some new um, stimuli for people um, because someone who makes you feel awe might not make someone else feel awe. We know that. Um, I really like taking people out of the lab, though. So I try whenever possible um, to take people into nature areas. Uh, When I was at Berkeley in California, we took people to a place where they could look out over the whole Bay Area. Um, It was a 360-degree view. Now that I'm in Toronto and it's winter, um, we've had to be a little more creative. So we've been working with the Royal Ontario Museum, and they have some really awe-inspiring exhibits. We will take participants to those, and they're always really excited because they think they're going to sit in the basement of the psychology building and click on the computer for two two hours, but they're going to the museum. Um, So I do think it's an emotion that's very well suited to getting people out in the field because it's such a big emotion. Um, I, I, there's some work on, I haven't done this, but on virtual reality and they have some really interesting results because that immersive experience I think is a really valuable part of awe. 